Okay, this video is comparison of fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Okay, all three of them, of course, are plant foods, and that's a good thing. There's no cholesterol in plant foods. Um, but fruits are, I actually think, a much better food than is widely realized. Veggies are a very good food. Nuts are totally overrated, and this video is going to show you why. Okay, these are you know, rounded off nutrient labels. See, these, this nutrient label here, this summary of fruit comparisons, like I said, it's a little bit rounded off, but it still gives you the general idea. Take a look at the calories. These are all fruits. Take a look at the calories from fruits. Um, avocados have tons of fat. You should never eat avocados. Plus, they spray a bunch of crap on them, these uh, antifungal uh, chemicals that are really bad with a lot of contaminants. Never eat avocado. Never eat guacamole. Seriously. I would never eat that stuff. Okay, um, now look at the rest of these fruits. Most of them have, you know, rounded off to zero fat. So they have minimal, minimal fat. The lower the percentage of calories from fat, the faster the person is going to lose weight. The catch, though, with fruit is the sugar is a fructose, uh, a lot of the sugar. So fructose is a little tricky. But, and I can also tell you, McDougal recommended people limit their fruit to about one or two servings per day. Uh, he was mostly dealing with older patients who had a lot of baseline comorbidity, disease. Okay, And he'd recommend eating 90% of your calories from starch, 5% from fruits, and 5% from veggies. But a lot of younger people who exercise a lot and they're skinny, they like to eat more fruit than that. Okay, so anyways, um, sodium. Look at the sodium. It's The sodium is typically like close to zero. Now that's really good. You want to have good blood pressure. You want low dietary sodium. In comparison, look at the amount of potassium. You'll, where you have zero sodium, you'll see numbers for potassium. 200 something, 100 something, 400 something. So it's pretty common in fruits to have a 100 to 1 ratio of potassium to, to uh, sodium. And that's actually great because... For most people, unless you're an end-stage kidney failure person and you have to watch your potassium a little bit and you're on dialysis, okay, you know, that's a special situation. But for a regular person, we're designed to eat probably 20, 25 times more potassium than uh, sodium. That's what our ancestors ate, okay? If you read Richard Moore, he wrote the best book ever written on high blood pressure called The High Blood Pressure Solution. And he recommended at a minimum, you must keep your potassium Five, at least five times higher than your sodium. You call that the K factor, okay? And that's actually the big secret about why black people have so much hypertension. Everybody, you know, is taught, oh, well, nobody knows. Maybe it's salt sensitivity, the hot climates in Africa and all that stuff. No, 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 no. Where they eat a plant-based uh, diet in Africa, like in uh, Kenya back in 1929, the C.P. Donison paper, 1929, Lancet Journal, uh, blood pressure in the African native, uh, 1,800 consecutive admissions in Kenya. Zero hypertension. Not a single person was hypertension. I recently spoke to a black patient who uh, had hypertension, and um, I asked the patient, I said, if 1,800 consecutive black patients were had their blood pressure checked um, in a USA or a Western hospital, what percent do you think would be hypertensive? And the patient said, oh, probably about 80%. And I said, why do you say that? And the patient said, because everyone I know who's middle-aged and older in the black community, they're all hypertensive, okay? And what I'm trying to say is, you know, so Richard Moore looked at the data, and what he found was they were not eating more sodium. They were actually eating the same or less sodium than other people in the Western communities. But here's the difference. They had a markedly reduced intake of potassium because they're not eating enough plant foods, okay? So that's why they're hypertensive. And millions and millions of people die because they don't know that. Okay, and they suffer terribly. Okay, strokes, heart attacks, uh, kidney failure. You go through any dialysis unit, you see a bunch of uh, black people with hypertension that destroyed their kidneys. Okay, um, let's look at the potassium number. Like I said, potassium, real high in all the fruits. So you're getting exactly what you want. Low fat, low sodium, high potassium. Wonderful. And what else do you see in fruits? You also see that the protein is very low. You want protein to be low. I talked about this in my recent lecture, my recent lecture on the kidneys and also the work of James Mitchell, that when you eat a real low-protein diet, 
the body takes the glycerol from triglycerides, you know, the three carbon glycerol, which is the backbone of a triglyceride. A triglyceride is three fatty acids attached to a glycerol backbone. Glycerol backbone is like a propane trial, three carbons with a hydroxy group on each one of them. Anyways, that's like half a glucose molecule, and it just converts those into glucose, okay, when the body is uh, fasting, okay? The liver is the metabolic workhorse of the body, and the main thing the liver does is to maintain blood glucose levels for the brain. The liver is the servant of the brain to maintain uh, normal blood glucose levels, okay? And when protein is in short supply because you eat a low-protein diet, you'll burn fat to take those glycerol molecules to convert them into glucose, and then the, tri then the fatty acids, the body has nothing to do with them, so it just burns them for heat. So the person is skinny. Okay, um, and you know, protein overload contributes to uh, kidney damage. You don't, you don't want to be protein, protein overloaded. You know, Walter Kempner fed the patients as low as possible protein, as low as possible sodium, as low as possible fat. That's all for a good reason, okay? Fruits are also uh, tend to be quite low in iron, which is good because the vast majority of people in Western societies, <clears throat> men after, you know, 20 years of age, women after menopause, they're iron deficient, okay? So anyways, that's a scoop on fruit. Everything's looking real good except... I wish the sugar was glucose instead of fructose, okay? But other than that, fruits look really good, and they taste really good. The difficulty with fruits is they're kind of expensive. They're difficult to store. If you buy them frozen, that tends to be better because they tend to freeze them fresh versus when they're sitting on the shelf, they tend to spray more junk on them, which I don't like. Okay, I've talked about that in other lectures. Okay, now we're going to look at a comparison chart of vegetables. So when you look at a comparison chart of vegetables, there's some big-time similarities to fruit. First of all, they're very low in fat, next to nothing for fat, which is good, okay? Corn, some corn has a little more fat, but still, fruits in general are very low in fat. They're also reasonably low in sodium. They got a lot more sodium than, um, than fruits do. And you can remember, what did Kempner give his patients? He gave his patients white rice, and he gave them fruit. He did not give them uh, much veggies, okay? Um, they are significantly higher in sodium, but they're still pretty low in sodium, all right? They don't got that much sodium. And they do have more potassium than sodium, okay? All right, then what else about protein? They're higher. They're significantly higher in protein than our um, fruits. Now, veggies tend to have, you know, the lowest caloric density. They're good for losing weight. You know, Dr. Mutugal said the more veggies you eat, the faster you lose weight, okay? Um, vitamin C, you know, they got plenty of vitamin C. Uh, they're, you know, can have a little bit of iron in them, not so bad. So anyways, that's pretty much the main scoop on veggies. We'll, we'll leave it at that, that they're a little bit higher in sodium and a bit higher in protein than our uh, fruits. And certainly fruits taste better. Okay, um, now here is a scoop on nuts. And the big dramatic thing about nuts, the reason why I never eat nuts, is because they're sky high in fat. Look at this. You know, it's for, per 100 grams, you're getting, t of nuts, you're getting like 50 grams of fat. They're incredibly fat. And a lot of people say, oh, walnuts are the best nuts because they got a good amount of Omega-3, you get plenty of omega-3 from low-fat plant foods. You don't need to eat these nuts. Look how fat they are. I mean, they're about as fat as it gets, okay? Some nuts, you know, you're, you're talking 70 to 90% of calories from fat. That's a ton of fat. They're super fat. The higher the percentage of calories you eat from fat, the more likely you are to gain weight and become fat. Okay, almonds got like these cyanogenic glycosides, a little bit similar to the cyanide. I would never eat almonds. Uh, I would never drink almond milk, okay? I know a lot of people think that's okay. You know, a lot of people say, well, it's such a small amount. I'm like, you know what? I don't want any of that stuff. Keeping healthy mitochondria is like one of the most important things you do. Why would I want to take a chance on that? I would not, okay? I've also looked at a lot of those almond milks. Most of them got weird emulsifiers in them or stuff like carrageenan. I wouldn't drink one of those things. Okay, and all the nuts are super fat, okay? They're all super fat. I think nuts are totally overrated, and Dr. McDougall has said, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist study where they recommend nuts, they were funded a lot of that stuff by the nut industry, so it's totally exaggerated. Over at, uh, at uh, VegSource with Jeff Nelson, they got 
lots of uh, videos about all the problems with nuts and other fats. Okay, so anyways, uh, nuts are just too fat. They're also high in protein. I don't want my protein to be high. And they're kind of high in iron. And I'm going to show you another surprising protein. Okay, so we talked about the Kempner diet. Kempner diet was 93% carbohydrate. More than 90% of your calories from carbohydrate. Only 2% from fat. Super low in fat. And as Pritikin had said in McDougall, it's impossible to be too low in fat. Forget about it. You can't do it. Uh, four and a half percent of calories from protein. Okay, and his patients were doing fine. And he wasn't giving them keto analog amino acids. He wasn't giving them essential amino acid supplements. None of that stuff. Okay, because nowadays with the kidney failure diets, they say once you get the total protein, the, da the daily protein intake very low into the very low protein diet. There's actually a definition of VLPD, very low protein diet, like 0.3 grams per kilogram per day of protein. They say some patients will need to be supplemented with essential amino acids or with um, keto analogs. And you can monitor the patient. You can just look at their albumin. If their albumin is, is being maintained normal or going up, then they're doing good and you don't need to give them any more protein. If their albumin is dropping, you might need to give them those essential amino acids or those keto analog type amino acids. Okay, anyways, that's the work of Kempner. Talked about them extensively in other lectures. Um, how much fat in different foods? Well, we talked about this before. There's tons of fat in animal foods, tons of fat in nuts. Uh, seeds tend to have lots of fat, so I avoid all those things, okay? Plant foods, you know, obviously avocados are a disaster. I would never eat them, but some middle-of-the-range fat content in plant foods are like oatmeal, 15 16%, quinoa, about the same, garbanzo beans, about 13% of fat, corn, about 10% of calories from fat, and then the really low uh, amounts are in fruits, white rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes are all 1% of calories from fat. 1%. That's why all those rice-eating Asians are all skinny. The Papua New Guinea sweet potato eaters are all skinny. Okay, Pop Populations where they eat lots of potatoes, they're skinny. Fruits, only 1% to 4% of fat. Fruits are often, you know, one. they're really, really low in fat. Okay, lentils are the, the lowest fat being at 3% of calories from uh, fat. Okay, I'm getting at something interesting. Also, fruits and veggies, they tend to both be uh, alkaline, which is really good. That helps prevent cancer. It's also protective for the kidneys. And they also, um, you know, they get, you got the good stuff like you get in any plant. You know, potassium, magnesium, vasodilators, what else? Okay, well, that's the key thing. All right. Oh, I wanted to just talk briefly about advanced glycation end products. Basically, the higher the fat, the higher the protein the more advanced glycations you're going to get. Also how it's cooked. If it's roasted or something, it's going to be worse or fried. But the point I wanted to make is fruits and veggies tend to be very low in advanced glycation end products. But uh, your animal products, of course, they stink. Fried food stinks. Uh, but nuts are quite high in advanced glycation end products. So that's another problem with nuts. Okay, here's a big bunch of charts on uh, the amount of advanced glycation end products in all the different foods. Look at these almonds, you know. In the thousands, okay, super high, okay. Walnuts roasted, seven thousand eight hundred, okay. Sunflower seeds, you know, four thousand seven hundred, okay. These are big numbers. That's why I don't eat nuts. Okay, uh, a regular potato if it's boiled, you know, seventeen. All right, so ten times that would be one hundred seventy. You know, a thousand times that would be like 1,700. And uh, think about it, your, your nuts and your, and your animal foods were a thousand times higher than that, okay? Or more than a hundred times higher than that. Look at banana, nine, 10, single double digits, okay? Hardly any advanced glycation products in these uh, plant foods, in these plant fruits and veggies. And now again, look at some of these, these nuts, 5,400 for almonds, Almonds here with their roasted 6,600. So look at this. Cashews roasted 9,800. Okay. These are giant numbers. All right. Uh, sunflower seeds 4,700. And then look at this canola oil. Okay. Or forget about, you know, canola oil 9,000. Olive oil, including the extra version cold pressed, you know, the optimization of all oils supposedly. 10,000 advanced glycation end products. I wouldn't eat that crap. I would never eat oil. I would never eat oil. You don't want oil in your food. It's bad. Okay, and it's even worse than that. They're acid-forming. Okay, here's like nuts and nut butters. 
they're quite positive in the amount of acid, so they dump an acid load on the kidneys. Same things with uh, you know your chia seeds, your sunflower seeds. There's this weird big push in the vegan community for all this high fat food. I think the whole thing's a big joke. I think it's a big scam, tricking all the you know the ignorant proles, you know, trying to trick them into thinking that <clears throat> the 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 vegan diet is healthy when it's moderate fat. It's not true. All the great benefits, they came from these low-fat vegan diets. Don't get me wrong. I think the moderate-fat vegan diet is better than eating animal foods. It's a lot better than the SAD diet. But from what I've seen, it tends to be the, the path to, um, you know, sort of a Mediterranean diet where anything goes. And look, people can eat whatever they want. I don't care. If you want to join the club of the fat, sick, and the stupid, believe me, you'll have a lot of company. You know, you have to, to be a low-fat vegan is to be an outlier, but it's your best chance at having good health. And, you know, and, and if you look at these numbers, it makes it obvious, you know, nuts are very high in fat, they're high in protein, they're high in advanced glycation and products, you know, they're high in acidity. Why would you want that? You don't. Okay, what are some other thoughts? Uh, well, I think that's it for this lecture. I hope you found that helpful.